For generations, Indonesians have been growing trees in their gardens and on their land to supplement their income. Trees grown in small numbers can help meet the country's demand for wood as supply from natural forests continues to decline. Their harvesting can also add precious rupiah into the pockets of smallholders across the country. But these so-called smallholder timber plantations tend to generate little profit, as many farmers don't know the techniques that will help them get the greatest benefit from their trees. Petani itu masih menerapkan cara-cara tradisional ya mereka mereka belum menerapkan silvicultur itu dengan baik. Uh, contohnya adalah pemangkasan. Mereka tidak melakukan pemangkasan. Di mana kalau tidak melakukan pemangkasan maka tentunya kayu-kayu itu akan banyak cabangnya. Kedua jarang sekali petani ditemukan itu melakukan penjarangan. Padahal penjarangan ini juga memberikan kesempatan bagi pohon itu untuk tubuh besar. Nah ini menjadi syarat juga bagi industri. Akibatnya apa? Kayu-kayu yang kualitasnya jelek, diameternya kecil, atau ukurannya kecil itu bisa dijual ke industri tetapi dengan harga yang rendah sekali. Forest officer Wudianto says that farmers are often unaware that better grades of logs attract higher prices in the market. So they don't make any particular effort to grow better timber. Kok kita ora dipelihara ya Pak kaya dipruning barang iki lho. Kudune kan kudune kan kuwi dipangkas mepet karo batang pokoke Pak. Mereka biasanya sulit itu Pak. Jadi kalau mau menanam ya bisa biasanya ditanam rapat itu. Jadi tidak tidak mengharapkan bagaimana tanaman itu cepat besar. Farmers are also generally unaware of the different prices applied for various grades of logs in the market. So they miss the opportunity to produce better timber and fetch higher prices. We've been analysing along the forestry value chain from growing through to selling, harvesting and transport, uh, primary processing, secondary processing and retailing. So analysing the value added along the different stages of that value chain, we want to understand better if there's opportunities for smallholders to add value, participate further along that value chain to improve the returns from forestry for them. Um, what's been especially interesting is we've looked at a number of instances of, of the different types, the great diversity of value chains, the different ways that they can be organized, the di different ways they are organized, basically coming up with the idea that there is no one right way, but that there are many ways. Um, there, it, it's really quite context specific. Timber value chain studies were conducted in five districts. Gunung Kidal and Pati in Java, Sambawa in West Nusa Tenggara, Bulukumba in South Sulawesi, and South Konawe in Southeast Sulawesi. We found some interesting findings. First, the most common timber value chain model that found on the ground was individual farmers sell the timber to middlemen, who then resell it to processor or industries. However, in some cases, we found that some farmers form a group and sell the timber collectively. They did it in order to gain more market access and better price. Second, we also found that middlemen play very important roles in the value chains. In many cases, middlemen were the only access for farmers to sell the timber. It should be noted that middlemen did not always get higher profit as compared to farmers. Farmers forming cooperatives and marking their timber collectively is an important step towards boosting their income. Cooperasi Wana Manungalo Stari serves as a cooperative to bring strength to individual farmers. Latar belakangnya pertama untuk menyatukan apa kelompok-kelompok anggota masyarakat yang mana untuk pengurusannya yang tadinya mungkin dari kelompok-kelompok itu bisa berdiri sendiri-sendiri namun demikian Kita sepakat untuk dibentuk kooperasi supaya kelembagaan ini lebih kuat diakui oleh pemerintah. Smallholder farmers like Srianti have also benefited from the community-based commercial forestry project, a collaborative research project conducted by C4 and its research partners. Living in Dengkok village, 
near Jogjakarta. Suryanti and her husband have a small farm where they earn income raising cattle and growing trees. Yeah, saya ngikutin pelatihan itu tentang penjarangan kayu yang dijarangin itu kayu yang bagaimana itu dulu belum tahu sekarang udah tahu jadi diukur dulu nanti kalau diukur tuh dikira-kira kalau ada yang itu kayunya itu jelek kurang bagus itu yang di jarangin jadi dipotong. Pamas appreciated the training that provide practical knowledge and skill in managing their timber plantation to improve the quality of timber they produce. This kind of training is good to be scaled up by government institution such as forestry extension services and other development agencies. In implementing this training, women need to be included as they have the potential to apply those techniques. Kami mendapat banyak uh, pengalaman dan pengetahuan, terutama uh, melihat bagaimana petani begitu antusias mengikuti kegiatan ini dalam hal bagaimana meningkatkan pendapatannya di bidang hutanan. Kami dari pemerintah daerah sudah mencoba mem menindaklanjuti untuk uh, memprogramkan kegiatan ini di 2015. Jadi uh, kami merencanakan untuk di semua kecamatan. Paling tidak ada pilot percontohan di setiap kecamatan untuk melihat bagaimana sebenarnya pengelolaan hutan rakyat yang menerapkan silvikultur. The government can also support these smallholder timber growers by simplifying regulations and reducing their transaction costs. To curb illegal logging, farmers must get a certificate of timber origin the Surat Ketarangan Asal Usu Kayu, every time they sell their timber. The government is also developing a legality assurance system, the SVLK, System Verifikasi Legalitas Kayu, with which all timber producers must comply, including these smallholders. It is difficult for smallholders to obtain this certificate because it has a lot of requirements and it is expensive. We are happy that government has allowed farmers to obtain the SPLK certificate in group or can use dokumen kesesuaian pemasok to replace this SPLK document. This SPLK could create an incentive for smallholder timber growers by removing the obligation of certificate of origins once they have complied with the SPLK. C4's project has helped farmers to be more market oriented by improving the timber they grow and their management, and promoting the value of cooperatives. A good price for timber is an important driving force, and the government can strengthen farmer capacity and simplify trade regulation, making smallholder timber plantations an attractive business now and in the future. <laughs>